You know, it is no secret that over the course of the past couple of years, crappy fishing itself has evolved and changed and the things that we figure out throughout our fishing trips are just becoming very, very simplistic in the way that we try to adapt to fish that do not want to commit or even bite. So for the past two years, upon watching fish in real time with the technology that is available to me or you today, I figured something out. Now, don't get me wrong, there is nothing in this world that is better than using a 13 or a 14 foot pole, slamming your jig right in this fish's face and them just thumping the ever living crap out of it and boat flipping a two pounder. That's not what this video is about. This video is about how difficult this summer and you know, late, late spring and even now in the early fall has been to consistently pull more fish off a brush pile. Now you've got to consider that I have spent hours upon hours looking up the perfect bait for this application that we are about to talk about. And what I have found, I could not afford because the molds that, you know, are an inch, inch and a half that do this application were around 300 bucks and Turner Fishing ain't, ain't no rich man, so. <laughs> but what I didn't dawn on me was I already have the perfect mold for this application. I just didn't have any of the jigs in the boat at the time. Watch the last video. You know, I didn't do a lot of talking because I had bronchitis, which I still do. You could probably still hear it in my voice, but you know, I'm pretty much okay now. I just waiting on my voice to be back. But in that video, I found a lot of fish on a stump that was in 20 foot of water. Now these fish were under this stump, literally suspended on this, on the bottom half of the stump. Now, upon taking my long pole, and putting the jig right in their face they would not move but what we have figured out over the course of the past two years is if i throw past the fish and wind right above them maybe an inch or two you know above the school that i could see on the screen one or two would start following the bait now following to me indicates that i have the right color they're interested in the profile, but if I throw out there two or three times and they do not commit, there's something that my application is not doing. Now, what does that mean? What do I mean by that? It could be one, the color, two, the speed of the retrieval, or three, you need just a little bit more oomph to your jig in order to get the strike so there's one jig in particular you know I, we've been selling it probably almost a year now actually and we've probably only sold maybe a hundred packs of them so there's not a lot of them out there so it don't doesn't really get talked about a lot because it's hard to give up the little minnow because you know you and i both know that jig will get a bite whether you're swimming it jigging it or even trolling with it that jig just does wondrous things but like i said in my last video i picked up the jig we call the little twister this is a 1.5 inch curly tail jig that has a what i call a thumper on the tail itself which is honestly a flaw in the mold that we bought but at the same time it gives it more vibration like it doesn't look the cleanest on the tail but it gives it more vibration as it comes through the water column and now the application that this jig brings to the table is honestly one of the most powerful tools to get more fish off a brush pile pretty much probably any time of the year this bait will have the drawing power to have your fish come up off the brush 
follow your fit uh, follow your bait longer and with the thumping of the tail spinning it's going to give you more bites on harder days now if you throw out a normal jig like a little minnow a little stinker or something and they bite it on the fall you don't need this application but if you're out there you know you know you scanned it with 2d you scanned it with down scan you found some fish with side scan you catch one or two and they just quit biting this is where this jig becomes a powerful powerful application because you're not just you know throwing the same thing out there repeating the cast which is a good thing don't get me wrong if you get a bite repeat that cast as many times as you mentally can do it and you should get more fish but at the same time you know from now on i believe i'm gonna have a rod rigged up with a little twister in a natural color i don't believe i want this jig to be in a bright color unless the water is stained now if you have stained water a crappy man green little twister a toad little twister which i don't have on the website yet uh, but the one i used when i went last saturday and got 18 fish was the monkey milk little twister you know nothing special every company sells monkey milk but it works it mimics a minnow it mimics a shad you know that color is just a, a fish catcher i guess you could say but the application that I use this jig in is what made it successful. Now, the, the, the rod and reel setup I had, I had four pound test vicious line on a 410 BNM rod. You can't get these no more. They sell one that's, that's called the 410 now. I haven't tried it out yet, but it's like 12 bucks. Very, very cheap rod. But the reason I switched to this rod you know I, I tried to cover in my last video i couldn't really talk i was using the five foot acc uh rod but my i personally just believe that rod does not have the sensitivity that i want while i'm winding if i'm vertically jigging i could use a stick and be able to feel a fish breathe because i use my finger on the line but while i'm winding you can't hold your finger on the line at the same time so I want a more sensitive rod. That's why I switched back to the B&M. Now I am gonna be trying other companies throughout the months whenever I can afford it because I want to find the perfect casting winding rod. I don't even know what you call that technique. Uh, casting, I guess. But I want to find one that it doesn't matter if they barely bump it or what, I'm gonna feel it in my hand. But back to today's topic, I was using the 410 rod four pound test line a 164 ounce jig head the ones we make here at crappy man jigs and the 1.5 inch curly tail little twister in monkey milk and the technique i was using i was throwing past the fish and i was letting the jig actually go all the way under these fish these fish were suspended around five foot you know there's 20 foot water column these fish were in, under this log about five foot deep. So I was letting my 164 fall behind them until it reached the depth of six to seven foot. That way, when I started winding, your jig's actually gonna start coming up in the water column. It's not just gonna go horizontal. Your jig's gonna start coming up in the water column. And what that did was when I got to the fish, cause I only threw maybe a foot or two past them. But when I got to the fish, I was able to keep it an inch or two inch above them because crappy are going to eat what's in front of them or what's above them. That, that's just the way their eyes are. So I position my jig in the best strike zone I can and I granny crawl this jig past them. And every throw, I'm changing up the speed. You know, I'm winding and then I'll kill it. Winding really slow, like as slow as I'm mentally am able to wind until one bites and when that bites i'm gonna repeat the cast so i hope you all enjoyed this video go check out the little twister it is a dynamite jig and if you're still having problems catching fish finding fish or just learning 
crappy fishing if you're new to the game check out this video right here it's going to help you a ton